guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Today we are going to continue our series that is our Python to the So today what we are going to learn is pretty simple. Uh, we are going to learn what are conditional statements, what are different types of loop, and what are in Python. So with, first we are going to learn what are conditional statements. So conditional statements are statements with execute when a condition is specified. A condition specified is true or false. So now let's say you want to uh, eat peanut butter and bread. So now you take out the bread and search in the fridge if there is a peanut butter. So here there is a if statement and if it's false, if there is not, if there is no peanut butter in the fridge, then you just go on to eat. So when the condition is true, the if if condition is exit. And when there are three conditions, including the else statement, then the else if condition executes. That means if you don't have peanut butter and you have jam in your fridge, so you can just put jam on your bread and just eat. And when the condition is false and there is no other condition, the else statement executes. That means if there is not not peanut butter, not jam, then you just take something else to eat. So now let's you may, let's uh, implement this condition statement in the factory. So we have to write a program that prints the grade of a student in the final exam that is going to be the use. So what are the steps to this? We have to take the marks for the three subjects that is math, science and English as the input from the user. And then we have to calculate the average of the marks of the for the three subjects and if the average is about 90. Then the grade is A and if the average is between 30 and 90, the grade is B and so on between 50 and 70 C and else if the grade is B. So now let's implement this in our code. So now go to your desktop and go in the start menu and type IDL. So as you can see we have IDL IDL and your IDL is So now go in file, that's our new file or you can just press Ctrl M. A new file and then it will be untyped on file. Here we're going to type uh, our worksheet is to, is to print a print the grade for final exams for a student. So now how can we do it? So before we move on to the conditional statements we have to get it. So we have max equals integer input in this we have to type enter the uh, marks for match or you can type anything you want but it should be clear and then we have to do in english equals in enter the marks for english there we go now we have to take for science equals h input enter the my sign there we go now that we have took this input we can just then go file and press save or save as you can press both but i'm going to press control now on Windows, it will use the File Explorer, Save As Menu, or Linux. Then it will pop drop to like this. So go ahead and I'm going to save it in desktop Python tutorials. I'm going to save it as gray underscore printer. And you don't need to type the dot and it will also be like py. There we go. As you can see, it says gray printer underscore dot py. And so now we have to type. So as you all know, average has the formula as sum of the number of integers. So we have to do math plus English plus science. And we have to divide it by three, that is three numbers. Now that we have got the average, now we have to use the if condition that is if uh, average is greater than or equal to 90. 
get up the raid and final exam is A. So now I'm going to just copy this at this thing. So before we copy this if statement, there is an else if statement and else if, but this isn't going to work because this is not valid in Python. In Python, you get the else statement as else if. So if you type else if average is greater than or equal to 70 and uh, average is less than 90, you print the grade in final exam is B. And now that we have made an edit statement, we can just copy this edit statement. So now you might question that why can't we use just a if statement instead of a l if statement? So the reason is when uh, you use if statements, uh, the program actually goes to the last uh, statement and it basically does is it doesn't execute all the code and goes to the last statement. And if it's false, then it directly exit the program without saying anything so it actually it's better to use and if it's not if everywhere so yeah and now in the last we're going to create else so why ain't why am i not writing and if average is greater than 50 no less than 50 so the reason to this is that else means if it's not greater than or equal to 50 then of course there's nothing else to give so it will go to the else so now we hit control s control s on our keyboard and save so now that we have saved this we can just press f5 now it will go in the id initial and execute program so here as you can see it gave me print the marks for max so i'm going to say and enter the marks for max so i'm going to say like 50 there we go, enter the marks. Uh, sorry, actually, uh, press enter and whenever you select something in ID and if you press enter, it will automatically print or write the statement on the current value you are on. So you have to be careful with that. So now we are going to execute again, type 50, then it printed, enter the box for English, I'm going to type 60. And for size, I'm going to type 70. There you go. The grade in final exam is C. So as you can see, it automatically calculates the average and continues with the same. Now, if I use it as uh, use 90, 91, 95. So there you go. It said the grade in final exam is A. So that's how you can make a if how you can use if and else statement. So now let's move on to our next topic that is what are loop, the different types of loops and so now that we have done this practical and so successful, let's move on to what are loops. So uh, loops a loop is a set of code that executes for a certain amount of time. So this basically means if you have peanut butter and you have a bread and you want to put two spoons in. So you do the same thing like take a knife, put a knife, uh, take uh, take some peanut butter out of the jar and put it on bread and you do this two to three times and then it's set to be loop. So loops in Python are mainly of two types. Infinite loops and finite loops. So, but there is only so in infinite loop there is only one type of infinite loop that is a while. But in finite loops there are two types that is a for loop and a while loop as well. So now you may be confused between why infinite while loop and finite while loop. So I'm going to clear the around right now. So now let's see what are while loops. So while loops can be of two types as I said, infinite and finite while loops. So in infinite while loops, uh, the loops, the loop runs indefinitely until the 
there is a keyboard interruption given by the user by pressing Ctrl plus C. And in finite while loops, uh, the loops run for a definite number of times specified by the programmer or the user. That means, uh, say you want to loop a set of code for two times, then you just use uh, define it as I want to run my loop for two times and it will run. So, so now let's talk about what are calls. So now what are the different types of files? So let's say you want to print hello world for infinite number of times in the same. So uh, the syntax is pretty simple. So let's say you want to print hello world for infinite number of times in the terminal. So the syntax to this loop is simple. While true and then you type the code inside the indentation while true loop. So now let's try this loop in our code. So let's go ahead and so now as you can see we did this code over here. Now we have to make a new. So I go in file, you find and there we go we have over here. Okay. So we have to do is uh, make an infinite while loop. There we go. So now how to do it as I told you while true in the indentation we have to type print hello pop board. So now that we was we have printed this so now let's say you want it to have some specific timer so how do we do it so i'm going to teach you this later on but for now just remember import type and then we go ahead and down and change time dot sleep 0.5 that is 0.5 seconds so now i'm going to save this as infinite underscore loop there you go and now uh, I will clear what is importing time mean and why did we do time not sleep Fine. And this will be shown to you in the later part of the video. But now let's see. As you can see, after every 0.5 seconds, it's printing hello world. So now that's an infinite loop, as you can see. So if I press Ctrl C, it gives us a keyboard interrupt. Interrupt error. That is this. It says it says in module time dot zero point five. It means that you stop the program while it was running on this particular code. So now that's that now let's go to what are file. The file loops are while loop that uh, run for a specific amount of time. The syntax is pretty simple, but you have to declare a variable in this. So I declare a variable i as 0 int. So now I try while i is less than or equal to 10, I print uh, hello world. Or you can just type i plus equals 1, that is adding. And you also have to type i plus equals 1, or else it becomes a new. So now why did I type what i plus equals 1? So here i plus equals 1 means that if the integer value is added by 1, and then it will go ahead and check if it's less than or equal to 10. So now let's do, let's use this in our code. So now we are going to go in and make a new file and we are going to type uh, finite while new. So now you may ask in all the files that I have written till now, I use this hashtag symbol as the topic of the code. So now, uh, what does that do? This hashtag means that it won't actually have to read the statement and execute as it is. So it will just ignore the statement that are in this comment. In this commented reason. So now we have to do is i equals 0. Then we type while i is less than 10. We print Hello, Mama World. There you go. Now that we print Hello World, I plus equals one. Now we save this as finite underscore while 
file and the code too. There you go. I now have saved that and now I can just press F5. So now as you can see it printed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. As you can see it printed 10 times. So why did it print 10 times and not 9 times because it's even less than 10 times. So basically it started from 0, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's from the 9. If you want, we can just change it over here, I, and if I go ahead and type F at the starting of the statement, it should print the number that is there. What is the value of y? So as you can see, it printed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And if I type it 1 over here, then it will execute only 9 times. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There you go. It's 9 times. So basically, it depends on from what number you start. So yeah. Now let me move on to what I find. So now, we have what I find. So, for loops are a type of infinite no, finite loops which are easier to use than using infinite loops using finite while loops so why? because you don't have to declare any variable for i and you can just type for i in range 10 or whatever you want and in type print hello world so now let's test this out I'm going to go in our python and go in file new file as you can see, it opens a new file as like before. I'm going to finite for loops. So now in this, I just have to type for i in range 10. I'm going to type 10. And I'm going to type print f hello in double quotes hello comma world. Double quotes and type I over here. Go to back it and save this as finite underscore for underscore loop. There you go. So there we go. And you can see it is ready. Now we press F10. And as you see, it executed this right here, and then after again. And as you can see, it printed this again. As you can see, it, it is not starting from zero; it starts from now. It starts from zero and ends at nine. That means the number you type it stops at that specific number, not below the number, below one from the number. So now let's go ahead and see what our modules. So modules are packages that help the programmer to make the program look and function better. So in this video we are going to learn about two modules, basically two modules that are the time module and the module. So now let's go ahead and make a new file and we are going to say modules. Now we are going to say this as modules.py or you can just say it like that. So now that is so how do we import the module? As I told you earlier, we can type just import time. Now it imported the time file, which is in your Python directory, wherever you have your Python. You can just get this time on the standard library. You have to install standard library. With Linux, it comes with Linux, and in Windows and MacOS, you have to install it from the website, from the installer. If you have not installed, follow the steps on the site link, link given in the description and let's move on to the module. So now that I have imported time, I'm going to create pi as my source state. Okay, so now it's going to create pi. So what is the use of this time module? So the use of time module is to just sleep for a few seconds, that is like 2 seconds. And then we're going to print hello. So now, if we execute this, this is going to basically import.
put the time module first of all, then it will be high and wait for the 2 seconds, then it's going to print hello. So now let's execute this, it's print high and after 2 seconds it will print hello. So now let's go ahead and import our OS code. So what does this OS module mean? Import OS. So you can import as many modules as you want, it doesn't matter. Because those are standard libraries, these are the standard libraries that come with Python, that come with Python. Or if you don't have these, go to your terminal or your command prompt and type pip. In Linux, you have to type pip3, install time, and it will automatically install the package. And on Windows, you have to just type pip install time. Uh, it will be already shown. It will give an error, could not find the version, that's how you find any kind of event. It doesn't find time module because it is from with Python. And if you type pip3 install OS, sorry, uh, my bad, OS, uh, it will also say no budget distribution file for OS. So this is basically that comes with the installer. And if you want to install any other modules than these, send the module. You can directly go with the method with to install any module name and basically this works for Windows as well but it's easier to type pip install the module name. So now moving on to our OS. So what does this do? So now if I say OS dot system it's going to automatically say that you have to execute a code in the system. Now let's say I want to do CD desktop. So I want to go to the desktop CD. So now before we exit, uh, before we have to go to the CD uh, slash, so CD slash, rest. Now it won't work in the IDE set. So you have to go in your terminal, over the terminal and type cd desktop or wherever you have saved go to the file explorer in windows or you go in your file explorer or for Linux the uh, files and go in wherever you have saved it in, uh, in Linux you have to just right click and press open in terminal now it's open it automatically but in windows you have to copy the directory that given over here and go in type cd control v and type the directory so it's really simple on linux because it types in the right click and it's in the terminal so now let's see how we can use it so now let's go ahead in here and type py in uh, in your normal window, you have to type py the name of the file dot py. But for Linux users, you have to type python space the name of the file that is one to py for me. And sorry, python three because you have python three song. And then you can see hi, hello, internet with the C slash, but it's it will do clear so in clear so now let's use some conditional statements in the OS system come on so we have to type cls if os dot name equals 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 operator is a relational operator that means if it is equal to this string that is NC for now we have to do so now what does this mean so this means that it will do the command cls if the os.name then it is type of the os is nc that is windows but if it is a unix type system that is our linux and then os then we have to type else clear so now let's press f5 but before we get the id shell sorry for that but in windows in this link id shell you can't use any os system command you have to use the command prompt and the function. I use this, hi, 
hello if you know hello and quickly just clear the sleep so now i'm going to wait for um, any time that is time about sleep one second so now it's it's going to stop for one second and then execute it again so let's see hi and low and for one second it stop and then it clear three of seven so the cls command clears the command prompt and the clear command clears the terminal for the OS. so that's it for today's video i will meet you guys in the next one thank you